Welcome to the Do Good Work podcast, where do good work is a way of living, where we highlight the hidden inner beauty behind the struggle to achieve a new level of excellence in all areas of your life. And today we're going to be discussing, I think, maybe what is the epitome or the max of uh, or the source where do good work comes from. And we're going to talk about accomplishing your goals and how to complete your marathon from a reflection of my run of running my first marathon um, and just reviewing a few things where we're going to talk about just my experience here, but also how it can relate to accomplishing your goals. And I'm not going to go through mile by mile diagnosis, but I am going to go through some lessons that can be applied into all areas of, of your life, specifically when it comes to accomplishing a very specific goal that will require sacrifice and will require effort on your part. And almost any goal worthwhile will report a heavy, significant of investment and time. So I'm just going to discuss here and just go through a few things for the marathon. And we're going to break this episode into essentially three sections the preparation, the run itself, and some finishing thoughts, uh, some closing thoughts from it. So in preparation, there's a few things that I had to do, and I would encourage you that you do as well whenever you're setting out to do something to accomplish um, anything that makes uh, inner greatness, exterior greatness, if it's changing your career, if it's with your families, with your work. And the three things that I did to prepare, and I'll go into detail on each, um, are the first is changing my language, second, believe, and then three, visualize. And I know that's very generic, but I'll go into more detail. So when I had to change my language, if I, you were to ask me six months ago, I'm recording this, by the way, in uh, June 2021, but if you were to ask me maybe in November, December of 2020, if I was a runner, I'd flat out tell you no, because based on the way that I see myself, I'm like 200 pounds, I lift heavy, uh, I don't fit in skinny jeans, I fit in that athletic fit, you know, I graduated from skinny jeans to athletic fit jeans. And for me, running wasn't just something that I uh, enjoyed as much as I used to. And I know that I've had, it wasn't the body type to be pretty light in running. Uh, it was kind of funny, actually, when I shared the, uh, the ambitions or the goals to family saying, hey, I have to run, I'm going to run a marathon. They're like, hey, dude, you got to lose some weight. <laughs> well, that didn't happen because uh, I don't know. But uh, that's a different story. But I did have to change the way that I saw myself. And I did have to change the way that I actually talked about myself it, to myself. This is kind of interesting, right? It's, it's inner self-talk. It's not like hypnosis. It's just like, how do I view myself? And I first had to start to view myself as a runner when I started hitting those five to eight mile runs and then eventually the 12 to 14 practice runs. I started to see myself as a runner then, but I didn't really typically see myself as the average runner who was pretty lean and able to run those mile times in seven minutes. Uh, nonetheless, I did change the way that I view myself and that did improve. And as weird as that sounds, it does improve the way that you uh, show up to a specific event, to show up to a specific task, to specific work. And it's just showing up with intention. Um, so the first thing, again, for preparation is changing the language. So I would ask you, when you're looking to achieve something, when you're looking to set out, um, how are you speaking to yourself? What are the language? Uh, what's the language that you're using? Are you using negative language? Are you using positive language? Are you using language that's going to empower you or language that's going to hinder you? And it has to be very, you have to be very careful with uh, what words you use and what words you paint uh, into your mind because you'll paint images with those words and you fill in those images and our minds are very powerful. Uh, the second is I had to believe that I could actually run that marathon. Now, there's a few things that I will give you as a caveat. Like this isn't some positive thinking uh, woo-woo type like speech here. This isn't for you to believe and then you can do it. Um, there, That is a component, but like if you just go ahead and wing it, you could run a marathon, but you could also get really hurt, especially because I did experience some piriformis inflammation. Uh, if you don't know what that is, it's a muscle around your hip, it inflames. And then for me, it uh, hit my sciatic nerve on the back. And after a long run, I could literally not walk and even sneezing uh, would cringe my back and it would cause a lot of pain. So I definitely had to learn how to improve my stance, improve my run and improve that muscle so I wouldn't run without pain. And thankfully, I was able to achieve that. But I also had to believe that I could run those 26.22 miles. And one of the things that helps with belief is actually doing it. So I actually started running. And I know in the past I did like a 20 or 18 mile run overnight when I was training for a longer Tough Mudder race. But um, the, the, the point being is 
I had either an experience or I had practice under my belt for me to truly believe that I could run this. So when you're setting out and taking that first step, I highly encourage you to, to find or to have that tangible either experience in the past. Doesn't mean that you have to have run it. Like now, now I know I can run a marathon because I did it, but I'm talking about things that you've never done before. If you have an experience or at least practice towards that end goal, towards that end outcome, it's definitely going to help you in your believability because again, going back to the first thing of like your language, if you don't believe it, if you doubt yourself, you're probably going to prove yourself right most of the time. So it's just important to make sure that you do believe that you can accomplish what you're setting out to accomplish. And then the third is visualizing the course. So I actually mapped out my run. Uh, this wasn't an official race because, you know, the whole COVID changed some of the, the race times and I, had, I just wanted to run this race at this time. So we did it and uh, I visualized every single mile mentally. Uh, and actually was taking like a warm shower, just visualizing, making sure that I could see where I should walk because of downhill. I don't want to hurt my, my shins as well as where I should be very careful. I knew there were some parts of the course where it was either very narrow streets or roads because these are some of the cycling lanes that I take to the beach um, and others where there's there could be traffic or there could be a car driving really fast and just be mindful of my environment. But I visualize and I also visualize success and seeing myself finish. I think that's important. And when you're doing this day to day, you don't have to see yourself just at the, the end milestone. Let's say you're working for a five year goal. You can't just visualize that always at the end, but you can visualize yourself doing that activity for this hour, for this moment, for this time right now and seeing yourself succeed in it and doing that repeatedly over time over the course of five years for you to finally hit that final milestone. If your goal, for example, was a five year goal. Now, we'll go into the next section, which is the run itself. And I'm not going to dive into, you know, again, mile by mile, but I do want to hit five main points that I believe can help you, especially as, you know, you run your own marathon, uh, metaphorically or actual in actuality. Uh, so the first is the obvious. Find your support group. For me, that was my, fi my family and my wife uh, pretty much being there to support me with the goal and also during the run just to cheer me on in certain sections, which is pretty fun, pretty cool. They also helped me with the recovery. Uh, and that was definitely very much needed because I could hardly walk at the end. Uh, the next uh, thing during the run, during your actual going, you don't have to have fancy equipment. I think it's just a reminder that you can start with what you have where you are. You can just start with those tools, even if it's very little. Like just to give you a realistic example, um, the shoes that I bought for running weren't the right fit. So I had to return them and that process took a while. So I ran with my old shoes and they had a hole in them. They had holes in them. And I had to duct tape the bottom of one of the shoes and that's no problem. So you really don't need fancy equipment to achieve whatever you're setting out to achieve. So I think it's just a good reminder uh, for you. The third is that, you know, if you start, you can finish, but anyone can start and anyone contrary to popular belief can finish. But finishing is a decision. And this is where the responsibility lies. So when you start, that's your choice. That's your initiative to actually start and do something. And finishing, that is another choice because finishing requires a lot of effort. I reflected on the mile times that I was trying to like quit because I really wanted to stop. Around mile 18 is where the work started for me, like what's where I started to really feel it. And I felt like stopping and that's only 70% of the way. Um, and then again, I felt like stopping at mile 22, literally 84% of the way. And I could have easily quit. I could have had every excuse in the world, but I just decided not to. And that, again, is a decision. And I think that whenever you're starting, starting is always fun. And I feel sometimes we don't accomplish all of our goals. So we are always in this perpetual mental state of I'm starting again, I'm starting again, I'm starting anew, which is fine. But also try to make sure that you have a very strong focus on I'm going to finish strong and I'm going to make sure that I know that the real effort is going to be required of me probably 75 percent of the way. So if I can just make sure that I stabilize in the beginning and make sure that I, you know, push through towards the end, um, that's where the real challenge will lie. Um, I believe it was Muhammad Ali who said that he didn't start counting reps like exercise reps until it started to burn, which I try to remember when I'm exercising, but it's definitely, it's definitely a different level of mindset. But just to give you a perspective that the work doesn't start until it starts to get tough. And that's really where we'll be tested. So decide to begin, which everyone can do, 
and decide to finish, which you have the power to do. Um, the fourth is uh, kind of an interesting perspective is that some people will respect your journey and, and encourage you along. I hope that you see this podcast as an encouraging for you and your journey. And others will simply not care that you exist or even care about you. Um, I saw this, you know, in a simple metaphor while I was running, cyclists waving, some not waving, but I saw it more, more uh, apparent when I was uh, running in a very narrow, tight lane where cars were coming next to me. Some cars took, went out of their way. You know how they do. They, they go out of their way to, to respect your lane because, you know, it's only the bike lane in the street. Other cars literally were inches from hitting me. And that was kind of an eye opener. And I was trying to find any other way to not run on the road because uh, there was probably one close call. Like if I put my hand out, I would have just been hit and that would have kind of sucked. Um, but just make sure as well that when you're on your journey to identify who are those that are either going to feel me, not because that's their responsibility or because I'm using them, but because that's who they are. And that's, a, that's the beauty of giving. Um, and who are those who are like life sucks? And unfortunately, some people do decide to do that. So you need to make sure that you stay away from them. Stay away from those who can injure you. And the fifth um, point, I suppose, if we're calling these points uh, for the run is understanding what normal is and setting the right expectations. And I think this is important to know because when you're setting out to do something new, you're setting out to do something that might be uh, tiresome. You, like that requires real effort. It doesn't have to just be exercise. It can be like if you're if you're working on the computer and you're creating a new program or you're creating a new song or you're scripting something, a new play. It, there is going to be that point where you're going to feel the fatigue or you're going to feel like you're you're tired or bored of it, um, and that's that's normal. But I think what's important is to define what normal is and setting the right expectations for you to understand that you can keep going. So for me, I knew when I needed to walk, I knew when I needed to run, and I kept a very slow pace, but I also understood that, you know, there was going to be pain involved. Like I knew that my feet were going to be hurting and that I'll be slowing down. And that's normal. I didn't just stop because of that. I just said, okay, this is normal. I was expecting this. Um, other times my body felt like quitting and the sun started getting really hot. And I was like, wow, I'm just like, I want to end this now. Um, but I know that, hey, this is normal. This is part of the process. Just keep going. And this isn't a way to like enjoy like that pain. It's just a way to say, hey, you know what? This is part of the journey. I understand this is part of the journey and I accept it. And let's just keep going. And that I think can be very helpful for you to set the right expectations so that you're not surprised when something like difficult arises or where there's more efforts required of you. Um, just setting that right expectation really does help. And again, going back to um, your, your mental health is making sure that your your sound and your your mind is aware of the real expectations and that you can um, you know overcome um, based on the way that you see the obstacle or the hurdle or whatever that is in the way. And I just think it's a healthy way to approach those things. Um, some of my final thoughts uh, for finishing is that you'll be surprised at what you're capable of, especially. Uh, of your mind, what you're capable of achieving just by pushing yourself. And I think that one of the key elements is to embrace difficulty. Not that difficulty is your friend per se, some people think that, um, or not just to do something hard because it's hard, because that's simply, that's silly. It's a little absurd. I know that some teams would say we do hard things because it's, um, we do hard things because they're hard. But you know, just doing something because it's hard is, is kind of pointless because the means to an end cannot be its own end. Meaning if you're doing something hard, the purpose of that isn't be to do it because it's hard. It's like saying the purpose of a car isn't to get to your destination. The purpose of a car is to be in the car. And that's, that, that's not going to get you anywhere. Just understand that level of, of, of thinking and how it contradicts itself. So the purpose of doing something worthwhile is for the end outcome, the hope of the end outcome that we're going to achieve. During that ride, however, there might be some pain. There might be some effort that you need to embrace. And we're not seeking to embrace the pain. We're not seeking just to go, let me just do the hardest thing ever because I want to you know, go through something and accomplish it. It's like, what is the goal? And whatever it takes, you know, it might be hard in embracing difficulty. But I'll go through that because of the hope of the end outcome that we can accomplish. And I believe that anything worth accomplishing will require a certain level of difficulty. And that's okay. And as long as you, you're okay with that, and I think that you'll be able to achieve whatever you do set out to achieve. 
I do know that there's a common fallacy though with modern day thinkers is that they tell you that pain or suffering is an optional state of mind. Um, that's, that's just ridiculous because we consumers, like we, we believe we want that to be true, but it's a lie, it's an illusion because growth doesn't really happen with the butterfly feelings and zero pain. Growth happens when we're really called to become someone greater. It, we have to tear, we have to build calluses, we have to endure, we have to you know, go and build strength. And that doesn't just happen with like zero, zero effort. Um, but again, going back to, to the main point is that when you grow, it doesn't make you cold to embrace difficulty. You're not gonna be just like a really hard, solid rock. Um, it doesn't have to mean that your lack of empathy. Um, I think being positive allows you to uh, accept the difficulty, but look at the positives, look at the hope, look at the end outcome, and being able to push and persevere through. And that doesn't always mean physical, because not everyone is going to be able to do this. Like some, I know some people who may um, not be able to walk properly, some who don't have the best of health, but they can still persevere with whatever they're doing. And that's where you become fully alive as a human. And that's where we're all capable of becoming. We're all capable of doing that. And I believe that we can by choosing. And I hope that this, this episode, I know it's a little different for most. I just hope that this can help you and encourage you in your path and your journey to, to embrace whatever is happening around you. Um, not to accept mediocrity, not to accept anything less. And this is not what that's about, but to embrace whatever you're looking to achieve and embracing it well. And, by, and like perse- persevering well you know, day by day, if it's step by steps, like, like I did, I did, I did my marathon super slow. Like it was really slow, but I took step by step. You too, with your days, day by day, task by task, minute by minute, just trying your best. And even if you like you, you fail or you have to get back up, that's okay. We try again, but that's the goal is to really embrace things that are difficult, not for the sake of difficulty, but for the sake of the hope of the outcome that we can achieve. And I think that's where the, the fulfillment really lies and becoming, you know, not, not your, best self because the people would just say that what is best it's your true self your your fullest self and i think that's a big expression of who you are who you're created to be and who the light that you're meant to shine so there you go that's how to run a marathon from the perspective of me running my marathon <laughs>